Hi, boys and girls. For language arts today, we're going to do a read aloud. Um, this is a science article. Remember, we've talked about genre before. The G-E-N-R-E -E means what type, what kind. Last time I used the example of what genre of music do you listen to? Maybe it's country or rock and roll. Okay, the genre of the book we're reading is a science article which gives facts about a topic. Okay, so we're going to learn facts about the topics that we're reading. Text features. We're going to look for headings. They tell you what each section or part of the article is about. Okay. Keeping clean. You notice it's saying it's a heading. Some animals help others stay clean. Cleaner shrimps do that. They live in the sea at cleaning stations. Okay. The title of this book is called Odd Couples. Okay, as we turn to this next page, up at the top left-hand corner, it says, set a purpose. Find out about some unusual ways that animals work together. So that's kind of how it goes back to the title, Odd Couples. Okay, you might not think that these two animals would have any sort of a relationship. Okay, pairing up in the wild. Animals in the wild have a difficult life. They need to find food, stay healthy, and hide from danger. Okay, and if you look at the picture down here, it's telling you that the one is a mongoose. Okay, the one. Then if you look down at the bottom by the number three, it says a mongoose eats ticks off a warthog. Okay, so that's probably something you didn't know. If you did, it's because you've read it in a book. Okay, but the way that the warthogs keep ticks off of them is that the mongoose eat them off. So they have this relationship that they work together with. The warthog gets cleaned off and the mongoose is getting a little snack. Okay, and then it says also at the bottom there, in other words, pairing up, that means they're becoming partners in a way. Going over to the other page, to make life easier, some animals pair up. The two kinds of animals may be very different, yet these odd couples live together. This is called a symbiotic relationship. Each animal helps the other. Let's see how this works. Okay, moving on, it says keeping clean. Some animals help others stay clean. Cleaner shrimps do that. They live in the sea at cleaning stations. To get clean, a dirty fish stops by. A shrimp climbs onto the fish. The shrimp has tiny claws. The claws pick dead skin and pests off the fish. The hungry shrimp eats what it picks. The fish gets clean. Okay, so going back to our headings, that was about keeping clean, how they're working together. Okay, the, the heading of this was keeping clean, where the whole title of the book was Odd Couples. But this heading right here is keeping clean. Okay, and it has a little arrow pointing over and says a cleaner shrimp cleans a moray eel's mouth. You can see how the shrimp's in there. And the eel's not trying to eat it or anything. It's knowing that it's helping him out. Okay, down at the bottom, it says, in other words, cleaning station, places where many animals come to get clean. Claws, sharp nails on its toes. Pests, harmful bucks. Okay, going over to this next page. Shrimps are not the only cleaners. So are plovers. These brave birds clean crocodile teeth. Crocs cannot do that themselves. Plovers eat tiny animals stuck to a croc's teeth. It's a good trait. Birds get food, the crocs get clean. And there's a picture of a plover. Interesting, huh, that that crocodile doesn't eat him. Down at the bottom, in other words, crocs, crocodiles. It's a good trade. This is good for both the plover and the crocodile. Okay, before you move on, use the text features. Is keeping clean a good heading for pages 448 to 449? I believe so because they were saying how these animals kept their teeth clean. Okay, and it goes back to the title with odd couples. They couldn't do it by themselves. They had to have some help. Okay, then number two, generalize. What general point can you make about some animals based on what cleaner shrimps and plowers do? Okay, I would make the generalization that there's lots of animals that work together that we probably don't know about that help keep each other, keep each other clean. Okay, animals, insects, Things that we would never guess that they even had a relationship. Okay, riding along. Light plovers, oxpeckers are birds. They ride on giraffes, rhinos, and other big buddies. 
The big animals don't mind. Why not? Well, the birds eat bugs. That's good for the big animals. In return, the birds get plenty of food. It's a perfect pairing. Okay, now remember, if we look up at our heading, it's changed to riding along. Okay, they're riding along. Okay, and there's the picture of the ox, the ox pecker there. Okay, if you look down, it says one big buddy for an ox pecker bird is an antelope. Okay, so the antelope is pretty thankful for that ox pecker. He rides along with him. Okay, in other words, rhino means rhinoceros. Buddies means friends. In return means as a trade. And pairing means a way to part, a way to be partners. Okay, looking over here, we have a remora on top of this animal here. Many of you know what that animal is. That's right, a shark. Uh, I know on our animal books, a lot of you have picked the shark. Some remora fish get a ride from a shark. Sea animals also work together. Some fish ride on other sea animals. The remora is a fish that attaches itself to sharks. It sticks to the shark's body. The shark gives the fish a ride. In return, the fish eats the shark's leftover food. Interesting, huh? In other words, attaches means sticks. Um, the shark's leftover food, the food that the shark hasn't eaten. Okay, problem and solution. How do antelopes and sharks solve a problem for their animal buddies? Okay, how do they solve a problem for their animal buddies? Why don't you turn to somebody that's in the room with you, your mom or your dad, or maybe a sibling, and explain, okay, how they solve problems for each other, how their relationship, them being partners, helps each other out. Compare. How are the ox picker and the remora the same, and how are they different? What do they have in common? Both types of fish, both live in the ocean, right? And how are they different? Oh, we have size, size is one thing. Yeah, go ahead and talk to that same person that you were talking to and tell them how they're alike and how they are different. Remember our compare and contrast? Finding food. Some, um, oh, that's our new heading, remember, finding food. Some, some animals like the same food. Both the honey guide bird and the rat, sorry, and the ratel love honey, so they team up. The bird finds a beehive. Then the ratel uses sharp claws to tear it open. Both animals get a sweet treat. Okay, and then it has an arrow pointing. This honey guide bird finds a beehive. You can see that it's found one there. And the ratel is also called a honey badger. It kind of looks like a skunk to me, but a honey badger. In other words, team up means to work together. Beehive is a place where the bees live and make honey. A sweet treat is something good to eat. Okay, going over to page 453. Coyotes and badgers also team up as hunting partners. Both like to catch small animals such as ground squirrels. When the squirrel is above the ground, the coyote runs fast and catches it. Sometimes the squirrel darts into a hole. That's when the badger uses its long claws to dig under the ground and catch it. Okay, an arrow pointing to the coyote. A coyote usually hunts alone unless a badger is around. Then the next picture that's in the circle there, a badger's long claws help it dig. In other words, darts means to run quickly. Okay, generalize. What general point can you make about some animals based on what you read about the ratels and badgers? Okay. You can hear some of your answers. Good job. Find somebody and tell them how do they help each other out okay, with this relationship. And remember, it goes back to our heading, which is finding food. So it has to do something with finding food. They help each other out. Okay, explain. How do coyotes and badgers work together to get food? Pretty interesting, boys and girls. I hope you're answering these questions and thinking about it. If there's somebody somebody by you, talk to them about it, explain it to them. Keeping safe, the sea anemone and the clownfish make a great underwater team. Sea anemones have tentacles that catch fish and sting them. Most fish stay away from the tentacles, but the clownfish hides in them. The tentacles don't sting the clownfish. Its body has a thick layer of mucus that protects the clownfish from stings. Tentacles on a sea anemone. A clownfish hides from its enemies in 
its enemies in a sea anemone. That had me tongue twisted for a little bit. Let me read it again. A clownfish hides from its enemies in a sea anemone. Okay. In other words, layer of mucus is a slippery covering and enemies, they are the fish that want to eat it. How does a clownfish help the anemone? It helps the anemone get food. The clownfish is colorful. Hungry fish can spot it easily. Sometimes a hungry fish chases a clownfish into the anemone. Then the anemone stings the fish and eats it. Okay, and here you can see an anemone eats a shrimp. In other words, okay, if you say spotted, it means to see it. Okay, explain. How do the clownfish and the sea anemone make an unusual team? Okay, how do they work together? Remember going back to our heading, keeping safe. Okay. To generalize, what general point can you make about how some creatures get food based on the sea anemone? Okay, how do some creatures get their food? Okay, the sea anemone can't very well lure any of the animals in without the clownfish's help, right? Plus, the sea anemone is keeping the clownfish safe. Help each, helping each other live. That's our new heading. Okay, we're still in the same book with the same title of Odd Couples, but this heading is Helping Each Other Live. All animals try to survive. For some, that means living with or near other kinds of animals. At first, these odd couples may seem strange, but look again. These partners help one another find food, get clean, and stay safe. Each animal helps the other get the most out of life. Okay, a shrimp helps the fish stay clean. Okay, looking over here, the remora gets plenty of food from a shark. And an ox pecker helps keep pests off an impala. In other words, get the most out of life means live happily and safely. Okay, let's generalize. How does living together help animal partners get the most out of life? Okay, so go back to the text and think, give some examples. Okay, how do they help each other get the most out of life? And number two, the main idea. What is the main idea of odd couples? Tell a partner. Okay, the main idea of these odd couples. How do they help each other out? Okay, boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this helps out a little bit as you do your animal report in your animal book that gives you some ideas that sometimes there's relationships out there with animals that we didn't even know about. Thank you. Have a great day.